Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another one of my vids. Today, behind me, I've got my G23 series and in this vid, as the thumbnail and the title suggests, we're going to be talking about the problems that I've had so far in my ownership of my 3 series. So let's get on with it. Hello BMW. Hello, what can I help you with? My bum's cold. I set the seat heating at the driver's seat at level 1. Thank you. So now that I'm nice and warm and cosy in the driver's seat, let's talk about some of those issues that I've been having since I've owned this car. I've owned this car now since September 2019, it's been about 4 months, I've done about 3000 miles in the car. Now over that period of time I have had some issues. Now I'm not going to spread negativity around the G20 because I do stand by the fact that this is a real great car, a pretty much an all rounder. So I'm not going to put you guys off but I'm going to talk to you about the issues that I've certainly had and how BMW have addressed those issues if they have. So the first issue that I've had which has been pretty much since day one has been the rear left tyre on obviously the passenger side. It's always lost pressure and I've had the same issue on pretty much all of my BMWs ever since I've owned them. So I had a F10 uh, 5 series a um, good few years ago. Uh, I had a F30 3 series just before this car. I've had my M140i and I'm currently driving my M4 as well. And apart from the M4, touch wood, on all the other cars I've always had a tyre pressure loss on the same tyre. And on some of the cars BMW used to basically say look they don't have a limited slip diff. You always end up getting a one tyre fire on the inner side. So therefore it's going to lose pressure. Now it was probably a pathetic excuse. And I never really bought that. Um, and I kind of lived with it I guess. Or occasionally you know when I've sort of swapped those tyres around. Or changed those tyres in due course. The problem really went away. But obviously with this car. Because it came out of the factory and at the dealership. And I had that issue pretty much from day one. First of all, I took it to a tyre fitter uh, just to make sure that there was no punctures, and there were. Uh, I then took it to BMW, and what they did was they replaced the tyre valve because there was some kind of a fault. Now, obviously, with the tyre valve, you also got the tyre pressure monitoring system, and that whole unit had to be replaced. So that was a, a job well done by BMW, and obviously, you know, they sorted the problem out, and I've not had that issue ever since again. So great job there, and BMW have sorted me out. So another issue that I had with the G20 was that these instrument clusters and the iDrive system looks fantastic but it has been quite temperamental in that occasionally they would start flickering and occasionally they would not work at all. So not like when you're driving but when you start the car up one would fire up and the iDrive system wouldn't. Um, that has been like a intermittent issue and the car went back to BMW. This was probably about a thousand miles ago. Um, the car went back into BMW and those issues were resolved. I think they did a software update. That update was done before I did the over the air update as well. So there must have been some kind of a glitch behind the scenes of these lovely screens and BMW were able to sort that out. They didn't replace anything. They did an update on the software as far as I know and that issue obviously resolved itself and I've not had a problem um, as such ever since then. Obviously the coding has been done as well. So as we're talking about day one problems, first world problems obviously, uh, in the G20 as well. Um, another issue was a problem I kind of felt with the suspension of the car. Now this car has got the adaptive suspension which is a great feature. And I have had adaptive on my M140i and obviously with the M4 you get the adaptive dampers on that as well. What I found with the G20 was every time I went over a speed bump not on about undulations in the road, actual speed bumps at, you know, the road speed. So, you know, you're going over a speed bump at, say, 10 miles an hour or something, which isn't excessively, you know, high or anything. Um, and equally, it's not excessively slow. So, you know, you're going over a speed bump, 10 miles an hour. The whole car, especially from this centre console point down here, you would hear, like, quite a loud thud. So it was literally like a something moving about, like, quite. it was literally quite a loud thud. Unfortunately, I've not been able to replicate that in this video because the problem's been solved anyway. It felt a little bit like, because the car was brand new, I thought they've got to, and this is dealership error, I guess, uh, in some circumstances, at times they forget to take the chucks out of, like, say, the 
uh, the suspension so when you go into a dealership you might see some cars sitting there slightly taller than, than normal and that's because in the suspension components they have these kind of like suspension chocks or something and it kind of stops the car from you know literally sitting low and deflating tires and and, that, and whatever that might be and I thought that's probably what they've done they've obviously let the car go without taking those out and because it literally felt like that so you drive in you go over a speed bump and it feels like a big thud I took the car back I've now kind of lived with it for about probably a month or so anyway took the car back to them I thought it might just get sorted over time uh, they got it on the ramp um, there were no chocks in the suspension which was great to hear um, but when they were prodding around the guy said to me look the car's too new we don't really know you know what's going on really we might just need to rebook it in for a couple of days and we'll take it from there uh, but we can't see anything obvious um, so okay you know there was nothing obvious you know that they could fix um, and I had the car booked in for a couple of days back you know two weeks down the line when the car went back to them did another software update on the suspension components and the problem has gone away so that's the thing with modern cars all they do is they plug in the computer and they update the software to resolve the problems rather than changing parts which to be honest with you I'd rather them change a part because then you know that something physical has gone wrong a uh, physical component but like this is the underlying problem still there I don't know uh, but anyway those issues have been resolved so more recently I've been reading on Facebook groups on forums on the G20s what seems to be a I'll say common uh, issue I say common I don't know the total numbers of issues that there have been obviously the G20 is a worldwide car but what seems to be common in my view seems to be the issue with the passenger side or the left hand side door mirror and what I mean by this is it fails to operate so the mirrors on the G20 are electric folding um, and when you lock the car obviously both mirrors should fold and what I found on my car was that again just out of the blue you know nothing really came across it but I found that when you lock the car the driver's side or the right hand side mirror would fold in the left hand side one would just stay open and occasionally it would have its you know a mind of its own so it'd fold in and then it'll fold back up and then it'll fold completely outwards which would feel like it's actually broken and when you are locking the car at times I had to prod it so that it folds in and as soon as I walked away it would just fold back up back out again now that was just a you know kind of an erratic kind of operation it just turned up like I literally just parked the car one day locked the car and started doing all these kind of funny things so I literally from the infotainment system just stopped using that function because the last thing I want to do is be driving down the road and it starts opening and closing I also found that it stopped dipping down when you put the car in reverse now I know there's the switch down here which you know you turn it onto the driver side and or the right hand side and it will start flipping down trust me I've had BMWs I know how they all work with the the dipping mirror that wasn't even working so there was some kind of issue going on and obviously again the car went into BMW to get that sorted now BMW again did a software update and it temporarily fixed the issue now they did say to me that they've got a motor on back order because these cars are far too new so they didn't have any kind of spare parts now this is what really um, surprises me here I mean these door mirrors they're not kind of modern technologies that technology has been out for quite a number of years and I'm sure BMW you know use these kind of mirrors like the folding mirror technology in pretty much all their cars from like say the minis all the way down to you know the X7s and what have you so the technology is there the motor system is there I don't know why they're having issues with you know the G20 perhaps they're having issues across the range with them but I've certainly not had this issue on any of my other cars and I can't imagine the motor system or anything like that is any different um, but to me again it seems like a common issue so it went into BMW it had the software update done on the on the wing mirror which they quite clearly said it's a temporary fix and they put the the motor on back order the back order came and they got me booked back in and they fitted the motor to the wing mirror so it started to fold in it was still not dipping up and down in reverse and what BMW said was the issue is with the control panel down here and that control panel apparently was not under warranty for whatever reason which I found really bizarre so they were going to sting me with like a £500 repair bill for that so parts and labour which I really didn't understand because it's kind of linked and I don't know what I would have done for the control panel not to work 
So anyway, I had a bit of an argument with them. Uh, I say an argument. I had a little bit of a discussion with the BMW or the dealership, and we managed to have this new control panel put in, obviously free of charge under warranty. I really didn't understand the basis why that control panel was not going to be part of a warranty claim. You know, I just don't understand. Everything else was working apart from that button. So anyway managed to get that so in case you guys have the same issues with the, with the door mirrors just bear in mind that the dealership might try and make you pay for something like this on um, on the control panel so yeah just fight your case guys and there you go so as you can see there's been a number of issues that i've experienced with the car since i've owned it over the last four or five months or whatever it's been uh, but the thing to take away is you know bmw's network uh, and the dealership you know they've been able to sort these issues out without a huge amount of quibbles apart from the driver side control panel over here uh, which again to be honest with you it wasn't a huge issue really i mean just put my point across and they were able to you know kind of see that through and uh, and help me out there but since i've had the car back i've now got another problem which has just lurked over the last few days and that is to do with the active grill on the front now the active grill on the front it's active because the vents open and close when the engine needs cooling now as you can see it's closed on one side and it's opened or partially opened on the other side now i really don't know what's happened here but it's yet to be booked back into bmw to you know get it inspected and no doubt what bmw are going to do is another software update as they always have done and it's great having all these mod tech kind of features on the car but when things go wrong you know it's a bit annoying you know especially as an owner now again like i say they probably do a software update on this uh on the front grille or it might be that the actuator that operates the opening and the closing feature might need replacing i don't know but i'll definitely keep you guys posted uh whether that's you know on my channel or whether that's on my instagram as to the outcome of that and um, you know hopefully it'll get resolved now as i said before i'm not here to kind of spread negativity around the g20 it's a great all-rounder pretty much i mean I, I love this car i mean i drive it you know pretty much as a daily you know swap between this and the m4 every modern car will have issues there's a lot of like say technology packed in those cars and yes with those technologies you know there's a lot of software that you know operates them and um, a lot of that will need updating through the dealership you know when things go wrong and it's not always like a physical part that needs changing so i'm 100 percent you know behind bmw on this in terms of how they've helped sort some of the issues out on my car whether it's software updates or changing a physical part and that's the thing to take away because when things do go wrong you do want to rely on your dealership um you know or the dealership network to get your car sorted Anyway, that's enough rambling in this vid. Uh, I will be back to the normal stuff anyway, you know, driving and, and what have you. But I just thought I'd share my kind of experiences on the G20 in terms of issues that I've had. I'm going to wrap this vid up. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, found it useful, you know, be sure to give it a like, share and subscribe to my channel as always. And hopefully, guys, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye. Right, guys, I'm back now. Uh, it's a few days on from the time when I was doing this vid. I've just come back from the dealership. I'm obviously sat right in front of my G23 series in front of the broken grill. Uh, you might be able to see from here. There we go. It's kind of half open and that one's obviously closed off. Uh, basically, I went to the dealership. Uh, they've diagnosed the issue. They have said that the grill is broken. There's like a motor within this section down here which operates the two flaps um, and it's broken. Um, don't know why it's happened, just failed. So tomorrow the car is now booked in. Today's Thursday, uh, Friday tomorrow. I've got the car. I've got the car uh, booked back in, and they're going to replace the whole, the, well, the entire grill. I'm not sure whether these flaps are part of the grill or whether they're behind. But they said that they're going to kind of repair it. Just thought I'll uh, do this quick update here and right now, rather than doing another video or putting something on my Instagram. And there we go. That's basically what they're going to do. So. That's about it really, I'm going to go now.